Alright, so now let's look at the other scenario that you're going to have to face here with finding resultant vectors. And that's when the two vectors that you're dealing with are not perpendicular. So when the vectors are not perpendicular, one thing that is a common thread with the last one we did here is that we're, step one is going to still be sketching the resultant tip to tail. What makes this a little bit different from perpendicular vectors is really right at step two. Reminder, step two, we use Pythagorean theorem with perpendicular vectors uh, to find the magnitude. Now with uh, non-perpendicular vectors, we have to use loss the of cosines because Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. You're never going to be dealing with right triangles when you're dealing with non-perpendicular vectors. And then step three, we're going to have to use the law of sines on that one. So let's take a look at the, the basic examples, which uh, the expectation is every student knows how, should know how to do these problems here. So let's look at the basic example. Okay, now what makes this problem such a basic problem to solve and such an easy problem to solve is the fact that one of the vectors here, specifically the 70 mile an hour vector, is a straight up horizontal vector with a direction of exactly zero degrees. And this makes the resultant pretty easy to calculate when we're looking at uh, the finding the direction here. Um, let's go ahead and, and do step one, which is sketching the resultant using tip to tail. So now we move on to step two, which puts us on the task of finding the magnitude using the law of cosines. Now before we can actually put the law of cosines into use, defining this r right here, we need to know what its opposite angle is to use the law of cosines. So if this is the opposite angle over here, we got to figure out just how many degrees that actually is truly worth. So to do that, we have to rely a little bit on our old geometry skills here and use a lot of parallel lines and a lot of transversals and uh, a lot of corresponding angles to figure out um, how to determine what that angle is. So notice at the very beginning of the problem the, the angle that we had over here between the 50 mile an hour vector and the 70 mile an hour vector was 60 degrees. Now with that 60 degree angle right there, we can use this green vector that we just made over here which was parallel to the other vector here and use some uh, corresponding angles. This angle right over here has to be 60 degrees. So with that 60 degree mark here, we can figure out what this arc over here is, how many degrees that's worth by just playing the supplementary angle game here. 180 minus 60, we arrive at 120 degrees. So the key to setting up your law of cosines here is you've got to figure out the angle that's opposite from the magnitude of r. Now let's uh, figure out what r is using the law of cosines. Let's just set up the problem using the formula for the law of cosines. So there we have it. You take one side, square it, add the other side, square it. That in this case, that's the 50 and the 70. Square those. Minus 2 times the 50 times the 70 times the cosine of that angle right there. Side angle side is always the name of the game when it comes to the law of cosines. So our calculator can spit this out here for us, and so now if we have r squared being equal to 10,900, let's go ahead and take the square root of that, and let's figure out what uh, r was, the magnitude. So we have 104.4 miles per hour. Now it's time to find the direction there, and let's calculate theta. And to do that, let's move on to step three. Let's find the direction using the law of sines. Now, the law of sines uh, needs to be used properly here, so make sure that we set up the right proportions here. The proportion needs to look a little something like this. The key to getting that law of sines set up properly is making sure that whatever angle you put here, in this case, you're always going to put that angle that we took all that good time to figuring out, which is that 120 there. It's very, very key that you have to put the opposite side over uh, underneath it. So notice when we're trying to figure out theta here, the side that we have to put underneath uh, the sine of theta would be the 50 miles an hour. So now to solve this proportion, we just cross multiply and divide. All right, now that we have the sine of theta being equal to 0 0.415, we're almost there. All we have to do is calculate theta by not using sine, but actually using inverse sine.
So now inverse sine gives us an angle of 24.5 degrees, and that is actually the angle that we want. So our final answer that we can pair up now with our magnitude is our final direction here of 24 and a half degrees. So this is, you know, the baseline problem that everyone should be able to do when you're dealing with non-perpendicular uh, vectors. So once again, let's see a similar problem, rapid fire with all the steps, just so that we can see it working, working one more time. 